power. A law that can be perceived as full-blown cowardly weakness. You are never supposed to cave and let your reputation take a hit. Right? Wrong. By using this law, which will be perfectly exemplified by a story arc in Game of Thrones. I will not kneel before some barefooted common and beg his forgiveness. Listen to what I'm telling you. Cersei understands the consequences of her absence, and she is absent anyway. By using this law, your opponent is lulled into thinking that you are defeated by them. On the surface, this may look horrible and is certainly counterproductive to Law 5, which states, guard your reputation at all costs. However, by surrendering in certain moments where you are clearly weaker, you carve out space to rebuild your strength and to discover the weaknesses of your enemy or competitor. Once you have done that, you can plan revenge and restore your reputation by crushing them for once and for all. And that is what the quintessential purpose of this law is. Dark and sinister, right? As you know by now, I'd vouch a hundred, if not a million times over for the ethical variant of this law. But, as said before, if you are working and living in a destabilized society and or a hierarchy that is based upon power, you'd be a donkey to not see the utility of this law. That's why keeping your surroundings clean and placing yourself in a hierarchy of competence is critical for long-lasting fulfillment in your life. Hence why Aristotle said that living in a right state is a crucial necessity for reaching eudaimonia. That is a word, a philosophy and a way of living that comes the closest to encapsulate my mode of being. Before you watch any of the Laws of Power video and feel inclined to using the dark side of the book, watch this power intro video to realize and understand why such dark and manipulative topics are discussed on a channel that is based on character and integrity. Friends, this is a powerful law, no denying that. This will be a very information dense and also the longest laws of power video thus far, but hey, I'm extremely stoked for this one. So what's actually in the video? First, we'll explore this law in Game of Thrones and then it's time to go over the keys to power. Following that, there's a story of the book that shows how a king used this law to not only survive, but eventually crush his former stronger enemy and regain his power. I'll also provide three main advantages of this surrender tactic and to finish it all off, we go over to the reversal of the law with a short bonus on something that I was recently told. Oh, if you're a Patreon member, you are in luck because the exclusive content on this video is the defiance of the law and a lot of clips of Game of Thrones. One more thing, guys, we should all be truly grateful to have access to read and explore the dark parts of the human psyche, of our own psyche with books like these. Remember, however, as alluring the dark world of power is, you don't want to keep playing games like these in your life, continuously living with a primitive, status-driven, fundamentally survival-oriented mindset and walking and filtering your surroundings through that lens. I want you to outgrow that and step into the space where you are able to help people, to advance humanity, to provide a helping hand to those in need and to provide fertility and blessing to your environment. Live by that code, live aligned with the overarching higher ideal and archetype of the honorable king and queen. Greatness, abundance and true human power in its most positive force will then be yours. Laws of Power, Law 22. Use the surrender tactic, transform weakness into power. When you are weaker, never fight for honor's sake. Choose surrender instead. Surrender gives you time to recover, time to torment and irritate your conqueror, time to wait for his power to wane. Do not give him the satisfaction of fighting and defeating you. Surrender first. By turning the other cheek, you infuriate and unsettle him. Make surrender a tool of power. Before we jump in the observance of the highly requested show, Game of Thrones, remember this. People who make a show of their authority are easily deceived by the surrender tactic. 
I see this happening all over the place, at work, in interpersonal relationships between managers, and of course, in the plethora of media examples. I keep mentioning the obvious and classic example of Billy Kimber versus Tommy Shelby. And I'm the fucking boss, okay? Now, you might ask why are those people who make a show of their authority easily deceived by the surrender tactic? The reason is obvious. See, your outward portrayal and sign of submission makes them feel important. It boosts their fragile ego. If their ego wasn't fragile, they wouldn't make a show of their authority in the first place. They have the need for control over people because Fish. they lack inner stability. When you surrender, they feel satisfied and you play into their beliefs that they conquered you and therefore they force you to respect them. All of these emotional Fucking problematic God. needs blind them to your real intention. You're a white collar genius. Go on. They become easier targets for a later counterattack. Friends, measuring your power over time is almost always the superior strategy and I don't repeat this lightly. Long-term satisfaction beats short-term satisfaction. Surrendering and bowing down is a short-term tactic that opens up a gigantic storehouse of options to rise victorious in long-term strategy. Learn to properly distinguish between tactic and strategy and your way of thinking enters a whole nother realm. So in short, as Robert Greene wonderfully put it, never sacrifice long-term maneuverability for the short-lived glories of martyrdom. The Tyrell family have helped the Lannister family to win a war they would have otherwise lost. So they are indebted and can ask for a favor. Salar Tyrell! Your house has come to our aid. The whole realm is in your debt, none more so than I. I would ask you to find it in your heart to do us the great honor of joining our houses. Is this what you want, Lady Marjorie? I have come to love you from afar. Tales of your courage and wisdom have never been far from my ears. And those tales have taken root deep inside of me. It would be an honor to return your love. You will be my queen. And I will love you from this day until my last day. A lot of things happen between here and the actual marriage which the Patreon member will get as exclusive content. What's important to know is that Marjorie is outplaying and outstrategizing Cersei at every step of the way. Well, I'm sure she knows what she's doing. I'm sure she does. The Tyrells are a problem. Marjorie has her claws in Joffrey. She knows how to manipulate him. Good. I wish you knew how to manipulate him. Joffrey will belong to Marjorie, the little doe-eyed whore. When she gets to marry the new king, she is in control of the kingdom and wants to oust Cersei out. Does your mother like it here? I don't think so. She told me never to trust anyone in King's Landing. I will include one little part which the Patreon members will see in its entirety. We're going to be sisters soon. We should be friends. House Rain was a powerful family, very wealthy, the second wealthiest in Westeros. Aren't the Tyrells the second wealthiest family in Westeros now? Of course, ambitious climbers don't want to stop on the second highest rung. If you ever call me sister again, I'll have you strangled in your sleep. After the marriage, Marjorie is controlling the king and it's now time to oust Cersei out. So Cersei introduced a new power over which the kingdom has no control. The priest, also known as the High Sparrow. How may I serve? An army in service to the gods themselves. And to you, of course, as the chosen representative of the Seven. What's important to know is that Marjorie's brother is gay and that was a huge shame and sin back in the days. So Cersei provides this information to the priest. The king himself cannot always punish those who deserve it most. All sinners are equal before the gods. What would you say if I told you of a great sinner in our very midst, shielded by gold and privilege? May the Father judge him justly. Get 
your hands off Sir me! Loris of House Tyrell, you have broken the laws of gods and men. Who do you think you are? Justice. <laughs> and Marjorie's brother is taken into custody and for questioning. The war is on. War. Do you deny all the charges against you? Of course I deny them. You never lay with Renly Baratheon. Never. Nor any other man. Never. Now here's the tricky thing. The brother was clearly lying. Cersei knew this would happen. But how could she get to Marjorie? Faith calls Queen Marjorie forward. Well, by getting her up the stand as well. She won't rat out her brother. That would be too much of a damage for their reputation. How do you respond to these charges against your brother? They are lies. All of them? All of them. Now that she has lied, she is vulnerable. Let's watch what happens. In the presence of the gods, do you swear that your brother is innocent of these charges against him? To the best of your knowledge? Yes, I swear it. We engaged in intimate relations. You lay with him. That night and many others. Liar. There is enough evidence to bring a formal trial for Sir Loras and Queen Marjorie. What? I am the queen. Now, just watch the satisfaction on Cersei's face here. Then, it isn't enough for her, so she goes to rub it in her face from up close. By the way, this move of Cersei has another lock concealed in it. She kept her hands clean, which is Law 26. You can observe this in the show when the son confronts her later about this. I won't include it here. This is horrible. Unacceptable. Are they feeding you enough, at least? We did everything we could from the moment they took your brother. I swear to you by all the seven gods. Lies come easily to you. We are making every effort on your behalf. What she's doing here is she's playing behind the friendly mask, just like Marjorie has been doing all along throughout the series. Great use of Law 44. Disarm and infuriate with the mirror effect. I know you did this. Leave. I'm afraid I must. My son needs me now more than ever. Get out, you hateful bitch! Sleep well, sister. Remember when Marjorie called her sister when she knew she had the upper hand? We're going to be sisters soon. We should be friends. If you ever call me sister again, I'll have you strangled in your sleep. Now it's being mirrored back to her. Sleep well, sister. What an enormous smirk on her face. However, Cersei's victory lasts only a couple of seconds, because the priest has heard about Cersei's sins, of which one of them he has proof now. So, this is what happens next. What will we find when we strip away your finery? A young man came to us not long ago. Mercy! Mercy, my lord! Broken in body and spirit. And he has much to say about you. Let me go immediately. You will order her to let me go. I am the queen. I am the queen. You have lost your mind. Look at me. Look at my face. It's the last thing you'll see before you die. She is thrown into a cell. Now what? Guys, there's only one way out for her. Is a way, Your Grace. A way out. Confess. To the High Sparrow, I won't. I made him. I rose him up from nothing. I will not kneel before some barefooted common and beg his forgiveness. As you just saw, she doesn't want to confess because of her pride. These women who threw her into a cell keep coming to her, telling her to confess and shame. She also doesn't get to drink anything until she confesses. Confess. Confess. 
Confess. Confess. This goes on for ages until she finally breaks. I have sinned. I see that now. I want to be clean again. I want absolution. May the gods forgive me. Good. Your trial will prove your innocence. Trial? I have confessed. To a single sin. Others you have denied. Your trial will separate the truths from the falsehoods. You have taken the first step on the path back to righteousness. I will permit you to return to the Red Keep. Thank you. Am I free to go? After your atonement. My atonement? As for her atonement, she is washed, her hair is cut and has to walk through the city. Correction, walk completely naked through the city. Now this physical transformation of her signifies a before and after her confession, so she can live as a new being now. As he puts it, Shorn of secrets, naked before the eyes of gods and men, Shame. to make her walk of atonement. For someone like her, who feels superior over the common people, to be on her knees licking water from the floor like a dog, and then for people to publicly see her naked and shaming her, that is hell. <laughs> now it's a waiting game for the official trial. As for Marjorie, she eventually asks for forgiveness, but she is extremely good and plays her role perfectly. She's truly opened her heart to them. She's always been very devoted to the poor and the unfortunate. And now she's devoted to the gods as well. She needs to get back to power. And she does this by unifying the king and the priest. And by doing this, she has also simultaneously cleansed her name. A new age of harmony. A holy alliance between the crown and the faith. In the meanwhile, Cersei is planning a return to the throne. Don't stop at the city. I want little birds in dawn, in a high garden, in the north. If someone is planning on making our losses their gains, I want to hear it. If someone is laughing at the queen who walked naked through the streets covered in shit, I want to hear. I want to know who they are. I want to know where they are. When the trial date has come, the day of judgment for Cersei, even though she atoned for one of her sins, she lied about all the other sins of which she was accused of. And she's about to be exposed today. Now here is where you see the true power of this law. You saw them both use the surrender tactic already. Marjorie's brother is up first, and he confesses to all the sins he committed in the eye of the priests. I confess before the Seven and freely admit to my crimes. To which crimes will you be confessing? All of them. But Cersei hasn't shown up. Observe the power of this law right now. There's something wrong. <laughs> you have nothing to fear, Your Grace. The trial will begin shortly. Cersei is not here. Tommen is not here. Why do you think they are not here? If the accused is not here, she will be tried regardless. We cannot escape the justice of the gods. Forget about the bloody gods and listen to what I'm telling you. Cersei understands the consequences of her absence and she is absent anyway, which means she does not intend to suffer those consequences. The trial can wait. We all need to leave. Your grace, we cannot let you leave. Let me through. Let me through.
Interpretation. I've cut half of this observation short. The power struggle between Marjorie and Cersei had been going on from the day they met. That struggle is great to observe and has valuable lessons in it. And it is included plus another great observation in the exclusive content for the Patreon members, which I'll upload in the coming days. As you saw, by using the power of this lock, Cersei managed to get out of an Ari situation. Had she not surrendered, she would have died. No food, no water. By surrendering, she bought herself a chance to strengthen herself and her position. She had put children all over the city, among the poor and the rich, so they'd get valuable information. Don't stop at the city. I want little birds in dawn, in High Garden, in the north. Eventually, it was those kids that killed Cersei's enemies by stabbing oh. them and by setting the entire place on fire. In one stroke, she got rid of both her enemies. Therefore, by using the surrender tactic, she lived to fight another day and is now in full charge of the entire city. Remember, surrendering conceals great power. It lulls the enemy into complacency. It gives you time to recoup, time to undermine, time to plan for revenge. Never sacrifice that time in exchange for honor in a battle that you cannot win. I rose him up from nothing. I will not kneel before some barefooted common and beg his forgiveness. Full disclosure guys, as intelligently as she used this law, keep in mind that Cersei is an evil character, not someone you should ever aspire to become. We will cover her in the King Warrior Lover Magician series as well. Keys to power. Emotional control is of crucial importance in the realm of power. As I've mentioned a hundred times, I will most likely mention another thousand times. But why? Listen, you have to be able to separate yourself from your persona, your mask. If you identify who you are, with who you portray to be, that is when you are like a bleeding fish surrounded in an aquarium full of starving sharks. You'll be shredded and eaten like supper. But try on, I don't want to appear different than I am. I am who I am. I'm always the same person. I don't wear masks. Wrong. So fucking wrong. Listen, I get what you mean. Trust me, I get it. And I feel the same repulsion if someone said, portray yourself differently. It questions our very existence. It eats us away from the inside and it destabilizes our sense of reality. It feels as if you're being inauthentic. You know what? If I dive into this, we will diverge too much from this law. If you want me to elaborate on this, let me know in the next Patreon meeting as it teaches the importance of true leadership for the betterment of everyone. So I'll park that here. The reason you want emotional control and control over your mask is because when someone is in a stronger position than you, you do not want to overreact. You're afraid of me because it's that overreaction that creates problems that could be avoided. It also antagonizes the enemy, leading them to overreact as well. I'm afraid of you. And when you're the weaker one, it will prove fatal to you. I'm sorry. You're fired. Come on. No, he's not. Oh, you gonna overrule me on that too? You can go. I had a deal that put your name right next to mine. And it wasn't even up there yet, and you started acting like it was on top of mine. To protect you. Bullshit. This wasn't about protecting me, this was about advancing you. You're afraid of me. Afraid of you? Boy, I just kicked your ass. And you didn't just want it, you begged me for it. So now, you're going to stay here, be humble, and learn your goddamn place. If you're nice, I might let you avoid being humiliated in court. You're the one who's gonna be humiliated. If you go to court, that's what everyone's gonna see. What do you want? 30 million. And I want it written in the settlement that Lewis Lid is the superior lawyer to Xander Epstein. No way. Yeah, way. You're really that petty. You can bury it in the fine print if you want. You can put it in Latin if you want. But it's going in there. And you're always gonna know it's there. If that's what it takes to make you whole, then we have a deal. But one thing. When I get home tonight, remember who's waiting for me. She's gonna cook me dinner, she's gonna rub my feet, she's gonna tell me she loves I me, love and we are never gonna think of you again. Well, maybe on our 50th wedding anniversary, we'll laugh about the guy she almost ended up with. 
if we can even remember your name. Now it's 50 million. And that's take it or leave it. Robert Greene writes, the next time someone pushes you and you find yourself starting to react, try this, do not resist or fight back, but yield. Turn the other cheek, bend. You will find that this often neutralizes their behavior. They expected, even wanted you to react with force and so they are caught off guard and confounded by your lack of resistance. By yielding, you in fact control the situation, because your surrender is a part of a larger plan to lull them into believing they have defeated you. This is the essence of the surrender tactic. Inwardly you stay firm, but outwardly you bend. If you get emotional, remind yourself that you only appear to surrender, like the animal that plays dead to save its hide. And friends, what is the one thing I try to instill in every single one of you? Exactly. You don't want to appear powerful at all times, but you want to be powerful at all times. By surrendering and playing dead, you are the one in control. By surrendering and taking a hit on your ego is sometimes the superior tactic versus fighting. Robert Greene also explains that when you are faced with a more powerful opponent and a sure defeat, it is often also better to surrender than to run away. But why is this the case? Well, by running away, you'll be safe for the time being, but the aggressor will eventually catch up with you. If you surrender instead, you have an opportunity to crawl around your enemy and strike with your fangs from up close. This law goes perfectly hand in hand with Law 15. Crush your enemies totally. Observance of the law. In the year 473 BC, in ancient China, King Wuzhan of Yu suffered a horrible defeat from the ruler of Wu in the Battle of Fuzhou. The king wanted to run away from the battle, but his trusted advisor told him to instead of fleeing, it was better to surrender and serve the ruler of Wu. This seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? It seems even suspicious that your trusted advisor tells you to surrender. But here was the advisor's sound reasoning. Surrender and study the man from up close. Once you've gathered enough information and the time is right, you can plot your revenge. After the liberation, King Gujan decided to follow the advice and therefore gave the ruler all of his riches and went to work under him as the lowest of the lowest of servants. Three years, let me repeat, three years he humbled himself before the ruler who then, finally satisfied with his loyalty, allowed him to return home. Inwardly however, former King Gujan had spent those three years gathering information and plotting his revenge. He had his plan now, but the time was not right. The enemy was still too strong. But when a terrible drought struck Wu and the kingdom was weakened by inner turmoil, the former king raised an army, prepared them for battle, then finally invaded and won that battle with ease. And that, my friend, that is the true power behind surrendering. It gives you the time and flexibility to plot a devastating counter blow. Had Gujan run away, he would have lost his chance. There are three takeaway messages, no, advantages that this law provides you. But before we get into those three things and the rather interesting reversal of this law, friends, real quick, I want to thank every single one of you for the great support throughout these videos. Every like and comment you place helps a lot with growing the channel. Right now, I'm juggling with this YouTube channel along with writing my thesis since I'm in the last year of university and also with me working in a dental practice. So I'm grateful for you patiently waiting for the videos. After I graduate, I'll set up a system that will enable me to upload new videos once in every two weeks, if not once a week. If you want to support me and the channel more, you can do a couple of things. First, is go buy the book. I mean, the author has put a lot of effort and energy into it. And if you're gonna buy it anyway, you can buy it via the affiliate link that I provide in the description, and that way you help me as well. The second thing you can do to support me is becoming a Patreon member, which will give you access to, first of all, your name coming on these videos, and second, provide exclusive content to you. Another little note you'll like, I highly recommend you to watch the movie Tenet. It's mind-blowing and extremely satisfying for your sophisticated mind. Ah. You have a future in the past. 
Besides that, you'll also be able to observe a subtle variation of this law among a couple of other laws. I'll include short pieces of it in this video. For the people who are new here, the goal of this channel is to provide you tools and strategies that you can implement in your life so you can achieve your desired goals and dreams in an ethical manner. Even more importantly, to maximize your potential. If that is something that resonates with you, consider subscribing. Let's continue with the video. So, what are the three advantages of surrendering? The first one, you'll get access to your enemies. Second, it gives you time to recover and then plot devastating counter blows. Essentially, it might give you an opportunity to keep yourself in the game. And third one, you get the chance to mock your enemies by being overly compliant. By the way guys, this is also one of the weapons you need to have in your arsenal of verbal dominance. Not only is it a tool that increases your capacity to fend off verbal attackers, but the same tool can be used to make communication more pleasant and serves as an aid to becoming more humorous around humorful people. It is a great tool for adaptation. And if you don't get it right now, don't worry, separate videos on that will be made. Robert Greene writes, Power is always in flux, since the game is by nature fluid and an arena of constant struggle, those with power almost always find themselves eventually on the downward swing. If you find yourself temporarily weakened, the surrender tactic is perfect for raising yourself up again. It disguises your ambition, it teaches you patience and self-control, key skills in the game, and it puts you in the best possible position for taking advantage of your oppressor's sudden slide. If you run away or fight back, in the long run, you cannot win. If you surrender, you will almost always emerge victorious. Reversal of the law. As said in point two, the essence and goal of surrendering is to keep you in the game long enough and enable you to strengthen your position as we saw with Cersei and King Gu Zhan. It is precisely to avoid martyrdom that one surrenders, but there are times when the enemy will not relent. Then you can make a kamikaze attack, an attempt to take the other person down with you or become an inspiration and set the tone for other people to follow your cause. Now, what does this mean? Why would anybody die with you? I'm not talking about dying in the literal sense here. At least, that's not how I interpret it. So, let me make this concrete like this. I spoke to a guy a couple of days ago. He told me how he felt that he was underpaid by his former employee and then got fired for it. My interpretation of the situation, which I haven't told him, is as following, which serves as a very probable example. He felt underpaid, so he decided to take a stance and threaten to quit. He hoped he'd get a raise in return. He made sure everyone around him on the work floor was on the same page, if not banding together. And this made him more powerful to the employer. However, the employer couldn't keep a man like that around. I mean, would you? So I presume that's why he got fired. Now, what's the point? And what has this got to do with the reversal of this law? Here is a bit of information that I left out. After he got fired, everyone else around him got the race. So instead of surrendering, he committed a form of kamikaze or martyrdom, even though his position got killed, but this enabled other people to walk away as well and the employer could not have this happen. Hence, all the others got a race. Regardless of this guys, he didn't get to enjoy the fruits of his own tactic. He didn't get to enjoy the power of the reversal of this law. Robert Greene advises to not use the reversal of this law. He states, when power deserts you, it is best to ignore this law's reversal. Leave martyrdom alone, the pendulum will swing back your way eventually and you should stay alive to see it. A perfect way to end this video and always remember the lessons from this law by picturing an oak tree. Why? As Robert Greene eloquently has put it, the oak that resists the wind loses its branches one by one, and with nothing left to protect it, the trunk finally snaps. The oak that bends lives longer, its trunk grows wider, its roots deeper and more tenacious. Classy.